Hey, how's everybody doing? I, that's, um, my coffee table is actually, it's actually a snare. It's the only thing I could find high enough to. Anyway, um, how's everybody doing? It is Marlon Gibbons and I'm here. You're there. You know what? Throw down in the comments. I'd love to know where you're watching from. I always get a kick out of that. Like it's, it's global, right? It's, there's no borders where you're uh, all over the world. So I know I have a lot of friends that watch from Barcelona. I know a lot of you are across the pond and I know a lot of you are spread out across the States. Where, where's everybody watching from? I just, I'm curious to know. Throw down in the comments, say hello and where you're at. So today what I want to talk about isn't really that exciting. I get, I get that totally. Although I think it's really important important and a lot of my content, I get it, is like that. I'd have a much bigger channel at this point and, and a lot more engagement if I, you know, I went to the controversial things or the, the, the buzz of the industry at that moment. But I just, I don't do that. I just have no interest in that. I just want to offer up good logical advice, re real advice, no guarantees or promises. I just enjoy having these, let's call them conversations with you and just real talk. So to that point, what I'm going to talk about today is something I think is valuable. It's definitely something that will apply to almost all of you at one point, if you if it hasn't happened already. Um, and I think it's important that you at least understand what your options are when you come to this this fork in the road. So I'll I'll put some options on the table that you can decide at that time when you come up against this what is best for you. So you're at least informed. A lot of you that are just kind of beginning will scratch your head when, when this happens and, and not know how to proceed without burning bridges. So, so I'll explain what it is and then just share with you what some of the, I guess, options could be for you. So you've just finished your album, your themed album, whatever genre that is, and, or, or you've gone into your back catalog and you've picked out two or three of your absolute best tracks, the best production quality, the best work you feel um, you've ever done or, or the best that you would present to a music library a catalog. Then what you'll do is you'll research the various music libraries out there and there are so many different kinds and types. You'll find what is best for you, what suits your music the best, um, you know, what, what has the best, I guess, kind of reviews out there. Maybe some of your friends are working with specific libraries that you'd like to also work with. Maybe it's a library that works with, um, you know, one of your favorite TV shows or programs and they get a lot of placements in that show. Um, Again, a million reasons why you would select um, a music library. And really important to note that although there are some cookie cutter music libraries out there, there are a lot of music libraries that, that have specialties or, or specialize in certain areas that could really um, improve your odds of getting in. You'll do your research, you'll find out who you want to submit to, and you'll go to their submissions page. And usually it's in their contact page, but sometimes they have a different link. But, but if they're open to submissions, it's not usually hard to find. So you find their submission page. Almost always, I've said this before, almost always they'll tell you exactly what the particulars are in how they want to be um, solicited to or how you are to provide your work. Very often it's just a streaming link so they don't have to download something. They don't get an email with, with huge files attached to it or going into their junk mail or something like that. Um, sometimes it's SoundCloud. Occasionally it's a Dropbox. Some libraries still want MP3s. They can put onto a hard drive and, and just, you know, delegate that task of, of listening and, and, um, you know, going through vetting these, these tracks. There are different methods out there, but very common is streaming links. Um, some libraries will say, you know, don't submit any more than three tracks and some will want, you know, a few more, some won't even specify. So just, just be aware there are different particulars, but the most important thing that I think should always be present is that you respect how they are asking for the work to be submitted to them. Um, don't, don't try and get creative and think that, well, if I, if I do this and you know, I know they only said three, but really they're going to love these tracks and I'm just going to send, you know, uh, 15 tracks cause it was really, they'll listen to all of it. They're not, they've asked for three. There's a reason for it. And it's usually to serve their efficiencies best. Um, incredibly busy. If you can imagine most libraries have tons of submissions. So, usually the reason they've asked for say a streaming link and only certain amount of tracks or something like that is so they can make the best use of their time. So following their rules 
really is respecting their time. And if you can show them right off the hop that A, you listen, and B, you respect their time, you're already putting your best foot forward. So I think I know that's common sense, but uh, worth, worth mentioning. If nothing else, follow their respected rules. Coffee is flowing today. So continuing on with this, this scenario. So you have your, your tracks, the, the best work you feel you've ever done, and you're going to solicit to, let's say two, two libraries. So you, in one scenario, I guess, send off to both libraries at the same time. And you, you submit the same, the same tracks, same links. Now what? Do you wait and just go with whoever gets back to you first? Do you have a favorite of those two and hope that, you know, library A gets back to you first? Um, and then in that case, what if library B gets back to you first and says, we love these tracks. We'd love, love to sign them. And then a few weeks later, library A gets back to you and says, Hey, we love these tracks. We love to sign them. And both libraries are exclusive. What do you do? Or do you only send off your tracks to library A and wait? and wait and wait because you're, you're gonna wait um it's it's rare but libraries sometimes will get back to you within a, a few weeks i don't know of many like i said before they they usually have a lot of submissions and they have a whole process for process process for getting those submissions um vetted and and you know replied to a lot of libraries won't reply to you or they'll say right when you're submitting due to the volume of submissions we get, we may not get back to you, um, or we will only get back to you if your music is a fit for our catalog. So you could be waiting and waiting, and there's no guarantee you will even get a response, but that could be your favorite library. That could be who you really, really want to get your, your tracks with. So what do you do? There are a few options. So I'm gonna cover a few of them and just kind of present them in a way that is, um, logical but you have to decide what's what's right for you because we all have different situations that are are unique and maybe option a works for you perfectly but it doesn't work for the producer next to you so let me go over some options that you have in in this scenario where you're waiting for a library to get back to you that you've submitted to so let's talk about when is a good time to follow up and if it's even a good idea at all to follow up um You've sent your, your tracks off to, let's say library A. So just one for now. Um, and you're, you're waiting and you're waiting and <laughs> waiting. Um, this is all part of the industry. Don't, don't feel that it's just you or that nobody else deals with this. Um, it takes a long time for these, these music libraries catalogs to go through their tracks. And as, as much as they are trying to be efficient, of course they want to go through these tracks because they know that there's gems in these submissions and that they want those, those tracks in their, in their catalog. So it's, it's value added for them to process these, these submissions and decide who they want to have in their catalog. So, so don't feel that they're just sitting in, you know, in a bucket and they're not paying attention to them, that they don't care. They really do care because it, it's going to help their business. So, just know that you're not the only one it takes a long time for. They're not skipping over you to, you know, get back to somebody else sooner. It's most likely they are going through the submissions chronologically. So how long do you wait? What, what's, what's reasonable? Um, as I said, it can take weeks, it can take months. And then of course you might never hear back at all. So consider this, if the library that you've submitted to actually explicitly says on their site, that due to the volume of submissions, they may not get back to you at all or that they'll only get back. There's different ways of, of them saying this, of course, but basically they say that they'll only get back to the people whose submissions they would like to put into the catalog. Then you need to understand, A, that you might not hear back from them. That's just how it works. So instead of just sitting on these, these tracks, and remember, these are tracks that you deem as your best work. So all the more reason you don't want to just sit on them. So you need to decide at what point are you going to move on or solicit those tracks to another, you know, music library or, or do something else with them. Because there's that fear that that library does get back to you after you've moved on and says, hey, these are great tracks, you know. Sorry it took us so long, but uh, yeah, we love these tracks. We'd love to sign them. 
and you've just signed them to somebody else. So what do you do? First, and to the point I mentioned in the beginning, you have to decide what that threshold is for you. How motivated are you to get your, your tracks placed in a library? Now, never mind just that one. Or maybe that one library is your ultimate goal. That's your goal to work with that library. Maybe it's prestigious or for, like I said, for any number of reasons. So those, those different, I guess, perspectives will dictate how long you want to wait for a reply. And I don't want to suggest that there's a norm because there isn't. Every library has different sized teams, administration going through these, these tracks. Some only have a couple, some are, are self run and, and are just bombarded and buried in work. And some can get through them a little more efficiently, but there is no, there is no rule. I would love to tell you, you know, after six weeks, then that's the cutoff point and, and go, but it really depends on you and how long you want to wait. So my advice for this scenario is this, a, you decide on all your particulars, how long you want to wait before you move on and submit to the next library and basically just put library a out of mind that will vary depending on your, you know, industry game plan. Option B is decide how long you want to wait before following up to that library, library a, you can follow up, but here's a few points of etiquette if you're going to. So I'll say this, if I've submitted to a library and on that submission page, they say, please be patient. We will review all the tracks. I don't follow up that that's my personal choice. I don't, I have full trust and faith in that. They will eventually at whatever time that takes get to my tracks and decide whether they want to work with me or not. I don't follow up. I'm not saying that's the best advice to follow, but that's my personal choice. And I do that because they've communicated to me, they are going to listen to my tracks. I'm going to trust that your call, whether you want to follow up with that, but there are some things to consider. Imagine they have, I don't know. Um, imagine they have several hundreds of tracks to go through, which is not unreasonable at all. If they have several hundreds of tracks to go through in their email, and it usually comes through, you know, uh, an email they've set up, you know, submissions at library X, whatever it is. And they have this inbox, you know, full of these submissions and that the submissions are all waiting to be reviewed and, and, you know, um, listened to and, and considered for their library, consider how long it's taking them to get through those submissions. But now add to that all the emails pouring in through that same channel, that same submission channel that are people saying, Hey, have you listened to my tracks yet? Did you get to listen to my tracks yet? I sent my tracks three weeks ago and I haven't heard anything back. Just checking in now consider how much more work they have to do and how much they're going to appreciate that email of you following up to say, Hey, have you listened to my tracks yet? Delete. But here's the thing. When I follow up with somebody, it's usually people that I have already had a dialogue with. So if I've had dialogue with someone and they've said, you know what, love to hear your stuff. Um, send me, send me a link, send me tracks. And I don't hear back from them for, I don't know, maybe three weeks to a month. I might follow up with them then. And in those cases, I'll keep things really brief, um, really polite, light, you know, not in a, Hey, what's going on? Why didn't you check out my tracks? I just think if ever there was an important time to be, understanding and considerate of people's time. It's, it's now. So I would respond to somebody who I've had previous correspondence with, especially if they've asked me to submit their stuff, my stuff, sorry. Um, so I would respond. And when I respond, I would be very brief, really polite, uh, really light and, um, and basically just check in however you want to word that, uh, you could even say, Hey, I'm just, just checking in, just following up. Um, and, and if you're able to incorporate some kind of, um, value to that conversation, um, then certainly do that again, just common sense. So something else to consider when you're sending out to these libraries is that the actual tracks that you're sending to these libraries are not necessarily what they're going to bring into their catalog. Many, many times it's just to assess the, the, your ability, your, the production value of your work. It's not that they necessarily want those tracks. They might already have 
you know, tons of tracks in that genre, but they're really impressed with you, your, your production value, your production quality. They may say, you know, we'd love to have you um, contributing to our catalog and we work on a, you know, per track basis. Not every music library is going to ask you to produce an entire album for them. That it happens, but it's not always the case. There are lots of libraries that kind of take a one track at a time kind of frequency. That to alleviate you of the worry that they're going to get back and say, awesome, we want all these tracks. And you're worried that, you know, library B is going to come back to you and say, awesome, we want all these tracks too. Um, it's not always going to be the case. So let's look at the possibility that one of the libraries gets back to you and says, we love all these tracks that this full album or these, you know, all 10 tracks, we love them. We'd like to sign them all. What you can do to, I guess the word is mitigate um, awkwardness or, you know, the, the chances of there being a difficult conversation with the other library in the event that they get back to you shortly after and say, we love all these tracks. We'd like to sign them as well. Not knowing, of course, you've just signed them away. Could potentially be an awkward situation, but it doesn't have to be. In your original correspondence submission, if there's a field, an area, usually there is, but if there's a place where you can put a brief description, here are the things that I would recommend you mention in that submission. One is make it clear that those tracks are one stop, that you own all the rights to those tracks provided you actually do, <laughs> certainly don't lie. If that is the case, that you own 100% of the writers and publishing and all that stuff in the track, mention that. Mention that it's one stop. That is favorable because they're going to ask you in the agreement anyway. Um, so it, at least it just gets it out of the way. Number two, possibly mention that at the time of this submission, you know, these tracks are not placed or do they exist or nor do they exist in any other music library. You can word that however you want, but basically you're telling them that you're truthfully telling them that right now at the time of this submission, these tracks are available. If, or let's say when they do get back to you and say, we love these tracks, at least they're aware that there is a good chance they have been licensed elsewhere. And there's nothing ethically or morally wrong with that. They understand how the model works. And I think if they were really impressed with those tracks, then they're really impressed with your ability. I'm sure that there is the opportunity for you to have a conversation about how you can write more tracks for them in a timely manner um, of the same production value, maybe even the same theme is at least the door has been opened and they've heard what you can do. So those are two, I think, important things that I would mention when submitting. A, that your music is one stop, meaning they don't have to worry about, you know, the drummer from the band coming in and claiming rights to the song down the road. And the other being that at the time of you submitting those tracks to the library, that they are not signed, um, that they're not signed with anybody else. Something really important that I should point out too is that everything I've been talking about kind of pertains to exclusivity. So libraries that you're going to have your tracks only with them. That's, that's how I work, but that's not because I think that's the better way to do it. That's just the path I've gone down. The libraries I work with, I work with them exclusively. There is something to be said for working with non-exclusive libraries and having your tracks spread out. Often it's referred to as, you know, you're buying more lottery tickets, you have more chances, but here's the reality of it is you could send, you know, your, your album to two, three respective libraries, and maybe they all, or one or two of them have non-exclusive deals. So you're not entirely out of luck if they get back to you and say, we love these, we'd love to sign them. It's possible that they're totally fine with you licensing them somewhere else as well. So at this point, I really don't wanna you know, keep rambling or confuse this more than I already have. I want this to be of value to you. So to summarize, if you send off to a library or several libraries, know that there's going to be a waiting period. Um, try and be aware of what their communication is on their website because sometimes they'll tell you how long you should expect to wait. Um, they'll also tell you often that you might not hear back from them. So if you're not paying attention, that could make that <laughs> anxiety uh, a lot more heightened. Um, and, and the fact is you may have missed the fact that they told you they might not get back to you. So know that you're going to wait, try and be considerate, understanding, especially during these times. Um, we're all doing our best. And I know that the libraries, the admin 
um, are busting their asses too. So just try to be understanding of that. And also have a backup plan in the event that two or more libraries get back to you all saying they love that stuff, they love the content, the material, and they want it in their catalog. And being prepared means you could have more material ready to pitch, you get a more similar material. It could be that you're ready for that conversation. It could be that you have another you know, idea for them or, or you've started a new project that relates to something big that they're doing or maybe they just released a new album that they're excited about and you have similar music. There's a lot of ways you can you know, keep that conversation going as opposed to going, oh, sorry, I gave those tracks to somebody else because you took too long. Don't burn any bridges. And lastly, just understand that it might not be those tracks that they're necessarily asking for to be submitted into their catalog. A lot of times libraries just want to hear how good you are and if you're fit for the, the level of quality that they want to, you know, have the bar set at. So as I said, I know it's not overly exciting stuff, but I am certain that most of you are going to come up to that, that waiting game sooner or later if you haven't already. Just wanted to prepare you or at least, at least provide some options so you don't feel that, you know, you shut the door on an opportunity. There's always ways or at least efforts to try and keep that conversation going. And hopefully I provided you with a couple ideas and maybe some insight as to kind of how that whole machine operates. So again, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you'll hit like if you found this valuable or it really helps get the channel out there. Hit subscribe and uh, maybe find me on social media and I will catch you next week, friends. Cheers.